Uh, welcome to the uh, webinar on Java EE6 uh, webinar series from jpassion.com. Uh, today is the first day on JSF 2.0, so we're going to cover JSF 2.0 basics and JSF 2.0 template and composite components and JSF 2.0 AJAX. Uh, I assume you have some knowledge on JSF, uh, so I'm not going to talk about JSF uh, basic concept uh, except uh, couple of slides. Uh, mostly we are going to actually talk about newly added features in JSF 2.0. Okay, so let's move on to the presentation. Uh, by the way, I'm going, to, I'm going to take the questions at the end. So these are the topics that we are going to cover um, in this JSF basics uh, uh, presentation. Uh, bin declaration, navigation, facelets, and view parameters, and flash scope and validation. Next week, we are going to cover uh, composite components and templates, which are pretty important subject on its own. So these are uh, the set of features, major features of JSF, JSF 2.0. Uh, it's annotation based, uh, meaning you don't have to have faces config.xml file anymore, even though it is still supported. And it does support easy navigation, so we're going to see example of this one in a few minutes, uh, which means that uh, you don't have to specify your navigation rule uh, in faces config.xml file anymore in most cases, because uh, JSF will select a default view based on the outcome of your action. And page description language now is facelet, uh, is the preferred uh, page description language as opposed to uh, JSF. JSF is still, JSP is still supported, but is a definitely a second class citizen as far as JSF 2.0 is concerned. Uh, JSF 2.0 now supports flash scope. And as I said, uh, the templating and composite components will be covered next week. Again, templating and composite components are very important topics. And uh, now AJAX is uh, very well integrated with JSF 2.0. You don't have to do any hack anymore to have AJAX support. Uh, so the third, uh, the uh, JSF topic is going to be JSF 2.0 AJAX. So we are going to cover up to this point, flash scope and Okay, so this picture shows uh, JSF architecture. Uh, JSF is based on MVC framework, model view controller. So faces servlet plays the role of controller, and uh, managed beans play the role of models. And then uh, JSF architecture in the beginning was designed to be very modular. So you can actually pick and choose your favorite renderer and plug in. Uh, so even in JSF 1.0, old JSF, uh, people were using facelets because it's easy enough to plug in different renderer. In that case, it's faces renderer. So the uh, X, XHTML, that's a faces faces faceslet renderer, JSP renderer, Zool renderer. You can have other renderers, so it's actually pluggable. Okay, let's move on with the bean declaration. Suppose if you have a facelet code in which you are accessing a bean using this notation, uh, the expression, uh, the language notation. Uh, so here you are accessing a managed bean called login. So in JSF 1.0, all JSF, you had to specify the managed bean, every managed bean in the faces config XML file. Okay. In, face, in JSF 2.0, uh, you don't need to specify those uh, the uh, uh, managed beans in the XML file anymore. Instead, you are going to specify it with using annotation. So JSF, it has annotation called at managed bean. Okay. However, if you have CDI, if you're using Java EE6 platform, uh, you should have a CDI. And uh, uh, in that case, using at named annotation is preferred because at named is a standard based uh, the, uh, the uh, naming convention uh, as far as the uh, CDI is concerned. So both managed bean annotation at named annotation, both of them should be able to be should be able to be used in JSF to that application. Navigation. So as I said, implicit navigation is now supported. Pretty much all the modern framework, all modern web application frameworks support implicit navigation for a long time, in fact. 
what it means is that default view is going to be selected based on the name of the uh, the uh, the outcome of an action. Okay. JSF uh, to that also support the conditional navigation, and you will see an example in the following slide. And uh, there is a class called the configurable navigation handler. So from this object uh, of this class, you can actually query navigation rules during runtime. So this is an example of implicit navigation. Suppose you have a command button here, and uh, if the button is pressed, uh, it will typically call the action method of uh, the uh, a method of uh, a class, and uh, that action method will generate an outcome. Or in this case, uh, you know, we just kind of hard coded uh, the name of the outcome. In this case, next. Okay, so regardless whether this action is the hard-coded value like this, which is very rare, uh, or outcome from a method, uh, action method, uh, that, that outcome will be chosen as the name of the view. Okay? So in JSF 1.0, you had to specify these navigation rules in faces config.xml file. In JSF 2.0, no more. Uh, again, JSF 2.0 uh, runtime will choose the value of this outcome and then we'll select next.xhtml facelet uh, file as a view, as a default view. Of course, you can change it if you want to, okay? but as a default, uh, it will just take the outcome of an action and we'll just choose uh, the uh, facelet of that name. This is an example of conditional navigation. So this is an, uh, in fact, the, if you want to support, condi con if you want to have a conditional navigation logic in your application, then you have to specify that conditional navigation logic in the faces config.xml file. So this is one example. You might have to use a faces config.xml file. So in this case, those, this is the from view, and uh, then this is the uh, if logic. Okay, so. The uh, the uh, um, uh, when the uh, the result of uh, or the value of order quantity is less than 100, then you will not display uh, this uh, the facelet. Okay, uh, this is another example. So if payment controller register completed, if it returns true, uh, then you want to display this view pay payment.xhtml. Okay, so conditional logic could be uh, conditional navigation logic could be specified in faces config.xml file. Okay, moving forward, facelets. So, facelet was designed uh, for JSF from the beginning. Uh, that's the reason, in fact, even in JSF 1.0, facelets was gaining a lot of actually support from developer community because it addresses the problems using JSP with the JSF. So, JSP and JSF, because they have a two different lifecycle models, so JSF has a six different phases and uh, JSP is a lot simpler, and those life cycles do not match, and it could actually cause very, you know, the obscure and uh, problems uh, during runtime. Uh, so that's the reason facelet was designed to address those problems. Now, uh, facelet become part of the JSF to that all. Okay. So pretty much all the facelet technology that was present even in JSF 1.0 days is now is actually pretty much the same features in JSF 2.0. So whatever JSF, uh, whatever facelet code that you used to have uh, in JSF 1.0, should, you should be able to use with the JSF 2.0 without a problem. So just a little bit of explanation, uh, the overview of facelet. So again, it, was, it is a preferred uh, view technology in JSF 2.0. Uh, so any new features moving forward in the future, all the, you know, all the enhancements will be happening only on facelet, not on JSP. Okay? So as I said before, JSP is uh, strongly discouraged to be used with a JSF application. And again, uh, even though it's being supported, and again, moving forward, uh, all the new features will be on facelet. It's XML, it's XHTML based file, uh, which means that document validation is possible using XML tools. And pages are usable from popular HTML editors. So there are HTML editors such as a Dreamweaver. Now you should be able to use JSF to that of facelet uh, file uh, the, uh, in these editors. And it wasn't, you know, it, it is not possible to use these editors with JSP. That's in fact one of the uh, problems 
uh, developer community or uh, design community, designer community was uh, were complaining about. It does support better error handling, including line numbers, and you can also use expression language in face that page, just like what you have seen before. And again, two new uh, the two actually uh, important features of Facelet is templating and composite components. Okay, so these two features are in fact from Facelet. Again, we are going to talk about these two features in detail next week. So this is a Facelet example. So here we have uh, the uh, namespace and uh, then we use uh, the tags. Okay, so we have input text and uh, command button. And uh, we use expression language notation. Okay, so these are not probably that much unfamiliar to most of you. All right, so let's take a look at the uh, first exercise. So what we are going to do is we are going to do a guest number sample application that comes with, in fact, the uh, JSF package and Java E6 uh, example package. So let's run this code. So this is a very simple application. So uh, it's asking you to uh, guess a number between this two and eight. So if I uh, guess a number five, and if it is a correct number, if it is not the correct number, I say, you know, the, it says, sorry, five is incorrect, and uh, six, and incorrect, and four, incorrect. All right, I'm going to try one more and then we're going to move on. Okay, so it's the incorrect. Maybe it's two or seven or whatever. Now, if you place a number, if you actually uh, place a number that is beyond this range, like a nine, and then you're going to see this error message right here. So it's a very simple application. So let's see the code. So let's take a look at the uh, web.xml file first of all. So you can see uh, it does have a face servlet uh, playing the role of controller. Okay, and uh, the the first page you see is a greeting.xhtml file. So let me just maximize this. And uh, so we have input text element here, and the uh, ID is user number. And the value is from bean's user number. So that's the reason, you know, the, this value is actually coming from the bean, okay? And, uh, oh, actually, I want to actually show this one first. So we have a graphics image and then value and resource and here. So this notation uh, in JSF 2.0, uh, it does have uh, the uh, um, resources uh, directory, okay? So, in fact, the, uh, when you're using this resource, it will, it will take a look at the uh, resources directory on the web INF and even in class path, if there is, in fact, the, uh, you know, these files. And this file image is a relative path. So, in this case, we have a relative path images and we have this file. Okay. So, it's displaying this, uh, the uh, Duke image. And then the message is uh, this message. I'm thinking of a number between two and eight in this case. So that is coming from a property minimum of the bean and the maximum property of user number bean. Okay. All right, now, uh, again, this user number is actually from user number property, uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, of user number bean is being displayed here. And then we also have a validation a long range. So, you know, this is the, uh, this validation long range is the one that actually check whether you entered a correct validation, a correct num uh, the, uh, the, uh, the number in the right range or not. And then we uh, click submit. And then it's going to call response. Okay. So uh, the uh, in this case, again, it's hard coded. Uh, typically, what you want to do is you want to use this kind of notation, like a user number bean, and then a method. And the method will uh, the uh, return some outcome, and that is the one that you are going to use uh, in most of the cases. Here we hard coded action. So what it means is that the uh, response.xhtml file will be selected as a view. Okay, and uh, this one is an error message. So in this case, um, uh, so the uh, the uh, uh, what what it does is that you know the uh, uh, is you want to display error messages of uh, user number 
item, which means that any error messages associated with this input text element will be displayed here. Okay. So if you take a look at the response.xhtml file, uh, again, it displayed the uh, Duke image, and uh, then uh, it displayed the response message. So response message, I'm sorry, the response property contains either, uh, you know, either uh, the sorry, uh, some number is incorrect, or yeah, you know, that number is correct. So one of those two messages will be set depending on uh, whether number is a correct cast or not. So that message is being displayed right here. And then we have uh, the back button. And uh, then action is again hard coded. So in this case, greeting that access HTML file will be uh, will be uh, again displayed. Uh, basis config.xml file, this is null. I mean, you know, we don't have to have even this file right here. Uh, but uh, you know, we have a file here, but it has nothing. And uh, now let's take a look at the code. So we need a managed bean. So managed bean is user number bean. So we should have uh, several properties, right? User number property, response property, minimum property, and maximum property. So as you can see, uh, these properties, minimum and maximum, is set to 2 and 8. That's the reason we're actually seeing uh, this 2 and 8, okay? Because that property values are, in fact, being retrieved in the view and be displayed, okay? And then we have basically getter and setter method, okay? All right, so very simple code. All right, moving forward. View parameters. So view parameters are the concept. Uh, this feature is inspired by page parameters from JBuzz theme. Uh, it provides a way to map request parameters to special component within the view. Okay. So let me show the code. So let's say we have uh, the world property in my hello bean. Okay? So this word is a property. What we want to do is we want to set this property from incoming request parameters. So that's the reason, that's the time that you want to use uh, this view prime. So suppose you have received uh, this uh, request parameters, uh, world equal Korea. Okay? And if you want to set this world property of this bean, then you can specify it using view prime, the name. This name specifies the uh, the query params key, okay? And uh, then whatever value of this key, in this case, Korea, will be set into this property, okay? So later on, you can actually access uh, that property, okay? So in this case, it will display Korea, okay? So let's try exercise three, which is running view prime. So this is the case. This and this code is the same code. Okay. So this is the code. So let me show this code. This code doesn't have view prom. Okay. So it doesn't have any view prom, but uh, and then it will just display the world property of my hello. So if you take a look at the world property, it is set with uh, hello world. So this is what gets displayed in this case. Okay. So uh, run. Okay. Now, even if you here, if you actually pass uh, the world equal Korea, uh, it will not display anything because uh, that uh, the query parameters are not being actually captured. Okay. So this is the next code here using view prime. This is exactly the same code, but this time what we have is uh, this uh, this uh, view prime. Okay. So now we are capturing uh, world. Uh, the uh, the uh, query param value and set it into this world property of my hello. Okay, so in this case, if you run the code, it will still play you know hello world for now. But if I pass uh, world Korea, 